Today we're going to look at this LNB meant for a C-band satellite dish. C-band dishes like the one you see on the screen are the larger satellite dishes anywhere from 8 to 10 feet in diameter and those can still be used to receive free satellite television even in this day and age. All you need is the right kind of receiver. Now you can tell this is a C-band satellite LNB because of the input frequency. C-band is the part of the radio spectrum from 3700 to 4200 megahertz or 3.7 to 4.2 gigahertz. And uh, this LNB is a special kind of C-band LNB known as a single cable solution. Sometimes these are marketed as one cable solution or OCS. And uh, that matters because when you set this up and program it into your receiver, it's important to set up your frequencies here correctly, but I'll talk more about that later on in the video. The LNB is a very important part of the satellite dish, not just because it's the antenna part of the dish that collects the signal from the dish pen. It also has to take that high frequency satellite signal, down convert it to a lower frequency, amplify it, and make it more suitable to travel through the coax cable down to your receiver where it's then decoded into TV channels. All right, so out of the box, what you get here is the scalar ring, which helps with mounting and the focusing of the signal. There's some mounting bolts, the LNB itself here, which has a plastic cap to keep bugs out. And on the back side here, there is only a single RF port here. And that's probably why they call it a one cable solution. This handles both vertical and horizontal transponders and in North America most of the transponders on free satellite TV are linear meaning that they travel in either a vertical or a horizontal line so this is nice and simple all you have to do is connect your coax cable to this no other motors or wires to connect also on this LNB you'll notice that there's a scale there for setting up the skew angle and also on the side here are some index marks for setting the depth of the LNB. One part that I didn't mention out of the box is this plastic plate right here. This is known as a dielectric, and what it does is it converts your LNB from a linear LNB to a circular LNB. Now you're only going to use this if you're trying to receive circular satellite channels. But in North America, the only circular channels are on KU band and they're paid subscription channels. So usually you're not going to use that at all. If you want to convert this to a circular LNB though, all you have to do is open up the uh, cap and slide this inside the LNB. There's a couple of little slots there, it just slides in and it'll turn your LNB into a circular LNB. But again, there really aren't any circular polarized channels in North America, so you probably won't use that. Just as a comparison, here is an older C-band LNB, and you can see it is much bigger and much heavier. This one does the exact same job that this does, except this needed a few extra wires connected. Right here, you'd have to connect these three wires going to this little blue box here. This is called a servo motor, and what that does is that would switch your antenna. It would physically turn the antenna around from horizontal to vertical positions to receive the different types of transponders depending on the channel that you're on. And you'd have to connect this to a big old uh, satellite receiver that you'd see in the 1980s or 90s. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. So looking inside this LNB, just take the dust cap off there, you'll see that there are two little tiny antennas in there, right there. And they are opposed 90 degrees to each other and those collect your vertical and horizontal transponders for you and the electronics do all the switching for you so there's no need for a servo motor all you have to do is connect your coax cable here and your receiver will back feed voltage to this to power it and make all those electronics work nice and easy all right so in terms of assembly and setup Use one of the bolts to install it in the scalar ring here. There's only one bolt that holds this in place, but you can see there's these raised spots here along with the bolt that'll keep the uh, 
LMB centered in that ring. And then put this bolt in so that it's protruding just a little bit so that when you put the LMB in, it kind of holds it, but it doesn't allow it to move around too much. And then using the index marks, try and get it set up on the mark you want. My other one was set up at 36, so I'll just put this there for now. Tighten that bolt down a little bit by hand, just so it kind of holds it. And now turn the LNB around and try to get those marks even. That way you know the LNB is gonna be set up evenly inside the ring. And then once you get it set up like that, just carefully tighten that down a little bit. Keep in mind, you might have to adjust this once you get it up on the dish too. All right, so the next step would be to mount the nose cone or LMB cover back plate on your scalar ring like this. And usually the LMB just slips through it and you can screw that in place. There's lots of threaded holes on the uh, scalar ring to give you a few mounting options to match something up that's gonna work with your dish. And now this would be ready to get mounted to your dish and every installation situation here is going to be different depending on whether or not you have a single arm button hook LNB mount on your C-band dish or a four arm or four strut mount set up to hold the LNB in place. And once you get the LNB mounted on your dish, you're going to want to make sure that you adjust the depth that it's installed at, as well as the skew angle. That's like the angle of rotation that the LNB sits at. And then connect your coax cable, and then you're ready to run a blind scan. All right, so here we are at uh, my receiver. This is an Amico Mini free satellite receiver that I'm using today. This is an excellent receiver. Uh, for receiving free satellite TV channels. And the single most important thing you can do when you're setting up your receiver is to make sure that the LNB frequency matches the type of LNB that you're using. This is a really important step because the information you enter here is going to allow your receiver to make the right calculations to find all the channels that your dish is picking up. So looking back at the box, remember that this LNB had a local oscillating frequency, an LO, of 5150 to 5750, a high and a low band. So here in the LNB type menu, I'll press OK, and you can see I've got that set up here. Okay, low band is 5150, high band is 5750. And this is really important because having this frequency match your LNB, again, will allow your receiver to make the right calculations to find the channels in the right spot. The local oscillating frequency is like a mixing frequency used by your LNB to downconvert high frequency satellite signals coming from space to a frequency range more suitable for traveling through coax cable. If your local oscillating frequency does not match the frequency you enter into your receiver, then it's going to throw your receiver off and you probably won't get any channels at all. So now that that's all set up here, I can press the white button on my remote. We're getting a great signal as you can see there. And we'll start a blind scan and you'll see these channels are coming in, no problem. This LNB is not too expensive. They're available right now on eBay for about 31 Canadian plus shipping. And I've had a couple of these in service now for over a year, and they've worked very well. I've gotten all the channels I would expect to get on any given satellite with them. They're pretty simple to set up. Like I said, basically you mount it, you plug in the coax cable and run a blind scan, and you're good to go. If you want to revive an old C-band dish, find an L&B like this, and you can get that dish going again for free satellite TV. If you're interested in learning more about free satellite TV, channels, receivers, or other equipment, check the description of this video for more information.